Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage of the Snowflake Data Cloud Summit here in San Francisco, California. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, alongside my co-host and analyst, Dave Vellante. It's the last day of the conference, it's developer day, but this show floor, you wouldn't know it. it oh, it's, it's packed. busy, it's packed. You know, the great thing about our industry is it's always changing, so there's always something new to report on, and that's because startups innovate, and there's constant funding into new startups, and they just come up with new ideas and do things faster than well, we're, we're about to, to talk to a, to a startup founder, so, so here we go. I'd like to introduce our next guest, Sarah Naji. She is the founder and CEO of Seek AI, direct from New York City. Thank you so much for coming on the show, Sarah. It's great to be here. Thank you guys so much for having me. Uh, so talk a little bit about Seek AI and, and why you founded the company. What, what was the problem that you saw that needed to be solved? Well, I was a data scientist for over a decade, um, and before that I was a researcher. And so I started Seek for two reasons. The first was I thought I'd be doing real research, but instead I was doing a lot of very mundane, repetitive work. Um, a lot of that was helping non-technical people just get very basic access to the data they needed. And along the way, like I was following LLM since 2018. And like even as early as 2020, I was seeing this huge inflection point of how, how much better they were getting at generating code. So I really like put the pieces together and I started Seek in 2021 to basically be able to automate a lot of the stuff I didn't want to do as a data scientist. To improve your job, it, it, you, you, you saw that your job was too boring and you said that there's, there's more I can be doing here. If we can automate this, I can be doing the more interesting stuff. Exactly, yeah, and like in the era of LLMs, uh, I think probably a lot of people, you know, people that work with data are so smart. They don't want to be doing like repetitive work or you know things that aren't interesting to them. They want to be doing real research, and you know I think AI is really going to free them up to be able to do this kind of work. So how did you tap LLMs in 2018? Um, just because you <laughs> kind of inside the, the circle, um, how were we able to get access back then? It's a funny story. So. Um, I had actually uh, been tasked to work on a project involving NLP in like 2018 um, because a coworker that was uh, an expert didn't actually want to do this project. Like he thought it was too like boring for him. So it was kind of like just handed off to me. So like I had to do it. It was a mandate. And I was like, okay, I guess I'll learn NLP. Like what is this NLP? You know, I wasn't even that excited about it. But then I just came across GPT-2 and I was like, whoa, this, this is pretty interesting. And so I kind of just like started following the space from there and that's, that's kind of how I noticed, you know, when GPT-3 came out, I was like, whoa, like this thing can like analyze data. <laughs> and that was, uh, that was really the aha moment. Wow, so you had a front row seat to see the difference between two and three and then obviously you can't wait to see five, but, but that's pretty interesting. And, 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 and your colleague thought there was no future. <laughs> you even thought there was no future coming in and then you, or clever enough to hook onto it. That's fantastic. How has the 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 fat Chat GPT's introduction to the world changed your life and changed your your status <laughs> as a founder? Yeah, I mean, when I started Seek, it was literally 2021, and so all my friends were running crypto startups, and I come from finance background, so I was like, you know, I, I had considered it actually <laughs> as a direction to go into. Um, but, so for a while it was pretty lonely, like, you know, crypto was like so hot in 2022 and I was like watching, uh, watching all my friends' startups taking off and I was kind of this weirdo, like, you know, working with AI and I'm like, guys, like it can help us uh, analyze data and people were like, what are you talking about? And so ChatGPT did, did us a huge favor, you know, it just really like, got people interested in large language models, it kicked off like this whole revolution, and uh, it's, it's been pretty cool to be um, kind of like part of, the, part of this movement, you know, this, this whole time. And really on the vanguard of it. So earlier this week, uh, Seek AI launched Seek Native, a Snowflake native app. Can you tell our viewers a little bit about this and why you decided to build a, a Snowflake native app? So Snowflake has always been a very high priority for us to work with. I myself used to be a Snowflake customer um, in previous roles. And so starting Seek, you know, even like in 2021, when I was starting Seek, writing all the code myself, 
I, Snowflake was the first data warehouse or like database anything that I started working with because I just, you know, from the very beginning, I just was really excited about building with Snowflake. And so um, we actually were a very early partner with native apps and, and Snowpark Container Services. Um, even like last summit, we were featured as a partner with Snowpark Container Services. Um, and right. so, yeah. <laughs> That's when it was announced last, last, uh, last June, right? Yeah. yeah, and so we've been a partner, you know, basically from the very beginning. And so it's really exciting now. You know, we're actually working with uh, real customers. Seek is deployed inside of customers, some as large as the Fortune 500, in Snowpark Container Services as a native app. And so we're just really excited to, you know, be part of the marketplace now. Like, you can even go to Snowflake Marketplace. Just anyone can go to the website and click a button and get access to Seek. So it, I'm just so excited with how far it's come. And, Definitely like super excited to keep partnering with Snowflake. And, and double click on the problem that you solved. You sort of you built the product that you uh, would have liked to use in your previous life, presumably, but can you describe that in a little bit more detail? Yeah, I mean, I think that, um, you know, nowadays, like if you look around at all of the innovations um, at Snowflake Summit, you know, this year, um, I think a lot of what you see is, you know, people pairing, um, large language models, um, not, not only with raw data, but also with like the metrics layer, or the semantic layer. Um, you know, it, it reminds me of my days as a data scientist um, where I'd get asked a lot of questions about, uh, you know, dashboards um, in, the, in, the, in the BI tools. And I just remember having to, you know, I wasn't just going into the metrics layer, like I was also going to the raw data to answer these questions. And so um, it's, it's really interesting uh, to you know, see people building with um, you know, the semantic layer, but uh, I also think considering you know, how the raw data fits into it is interesting. And so that's kind of uh, how we started and probably like the innovations will continue to add um, into the space. So, okay, so you're going deeper into the, to the raw data but then, you, like you say, you get a lot of questions on dashboards and, and BI. I mean, ultimately, <clears throat> that raw data has to be harmonized and has to serve all those different yeah. dashboards, and you want it to be consistent. At least, you want billings to mean the same thing in every BI tool. Do you help solve that problem? Yes. <laughs> oh, let's talk more, because that's a really hard problem yeah. to solve and a really important problem to solve. Yeah. So, how do you do that? Yeah, I mean, this is really why we're called Seek. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's really hard to just wrangle all of this raw data and actually get it to work when business users are asking questions. And so in order to really be able to organize all this data and maintain it, you really need AI that's going to like, you know, go through the data and help you just maintain all these models, especially as the models grow in number. Um, and so that's actually like kind of our contribution to the space is using AI not just to maintain the semantic layer, but also um, you know help people like build and maintain it. And, and it uses a natural language interface. Yeah, we also provide a natural language interface um, and a, a full collaboration platform. So you know business users can use the natural language interface to just ask whatever questions that they have. They can be fairly complex. Um, and then we also have an entirely different interface that data analysts or data scientists can use uh, to supervise what the AI is doing, um, help uh, you know, train the model and make it better, um, and uh, even you know, do code generation uh, themselves. Do you feel, okay, so there's a lot of discussion about maybe Snowflake should be building a semantic layer, but then yeah. the flip side of that is, that specialized startups like, like yourself or even the metrics players are going to be better at applying AI, you know, because that's all you do. Um, the flip side of that is if everybody's doing their own thing, then you get more silos. How, yeah. how do you see that playing out? Could, could Seek be a horizontal layer across Snowflake that is just the best product that everybody says, Let's use that because then we can harmonize all our data. That's is that the vision? That's totally the vision. Like, 
you know, we see ourselves as a, par a partner to all the players in the semantic layer space. And you know, Snowflake even uh, has alluded to um, you know, a, a semantic layer that can incorporate with uh, Cortex. And we see ourselves as a partner to all these companies. Yeah, when we use the term semantic layer, sometimes it gets confusing to people. Who, what are we talking about specifically? Well, it's basically, it's, it's really interesting how it came to be. I mean, it's been around since the days of Looker. Like, I, I would argue that Looker, you know, helped to invent the, <laughs> the semantic layer. And to be honest, like, as a sort of generative AI native founder, when I heard about it, uh, you know, a couple years ago, I was like, what is this semantic layer? Like, why, like, this doesn't even have anything to do with AI. Like, why is it called semantic? And I was so curious about it. And it turns out, like, it exists the purpose is exactly what you said, so that people can keep all their metrics consistent and you know, not, not be fighting over like which metric means what. So that was its original purpose, was to organize metrics. In the age of AI, what's been really interesting to see is you know, not only DBT, but you know, other, other uh, companies as well, like taking that idea of the semantic layer and adapting it for um, you know, the age of LLMs. And so where Seek comes in is we're not only like a partner to these companies helping them you know, integrate um, you know, the semantic layer with LLMs, um, but you know, we're also uh, going one step further and helping our customers um, actually incorporate the raw data themselves into this kind of ecosystem of LLMs and the semantic layer. I'd love to pick your brain on, on, on the, the next version of this topic, so you've got Snowflake popularized the separation of compute from storage and cloud data warehouses and infinite scalability, great. That's sort of the fifth era of, uh, of data platforms, we call it. The next era, with all this open table formats, is not only separate compute from storage, but bring any compute to any data. Mm -hmm. right, and that seems to be the, the pull from the market right now. But then, to your point, you got Looker, you got Tableau, you've got DBT, you've got all these different um, BI tools that are being fed. Is it possible that we're going to be able to harmonize that, that, that dissonance? And, and it sounds like that's, again, your vision. Yeah, I mean, that's also part of why we're you know, so focused on partnering with Snowflake in particular. I've always been really impressed by the way that they work with partners and like just this whole ecosystem that they've created. You know, they, they, they basically invented the modern data stack. Um, sure. And so I don't necessarily think, you know, I don't, I don't know if there's going to be like consolidation, if, if that's kind of what you're, you're you know, alluding to. Um, um, it's, I actually, I'm, I think I'm alluding to the opposite. Oh, okay. There's, um, Explosion coming, yeah. <laughs> right? And so but what I'm trying to figure out is, so you got, if I put all the data inside of Snowflake, I'm governed, I'm secure, it's, it's a, like a wonderful world. But there's this pull from customers, is, and even Snowflake is rec recognizing it. We recognize that not all customers are going to put their data inside of Snowflake. So hmm. that's Iceberg is the obvious example. Um, but then that opens up Pandora's box. So okay, so we have managed Iceberg tables, you can bring those inside of Snowflake which I don't know how it's going to play out. Our customers, in my experience, this whole open thing always, if there's an integrated platform that works better, people will go to it as long as it's not egregiously expensive. Sometimes, even if it is egregiously expensive, like Oracle, they, they stay there because it solves problems that they can't solve elsewhere. So I don't know how this is going to play out. Are people going to say, okay, well, I say I want my cake and I want to eat it too and I don't want to gain weight, so I'm going to capitulate and put it inside a snowflake because it's ungoverned when it's in the wild west. I, again, I don't know how it's going to play out and there's really not a question there, but, but, but I'm dancing around this sort of explosion that, that yeah. seems to be coming. How do you see that? Um, how do you see your role if in fact that explosion pulls the market to, to more open? You can, how do you play there? Yeah, well I mean like, We've always been seek.ai, you know, we've always been an AI company, right. and we've always been like, I would consider what the work we do like, you know, AI research. Um, like, I, I feel like, you know, when it comes to, you know, the, 
the sort of part of the, you know, the modern data stack is going to change so much because the semantic layer is going to become really important. And like, there is going to be a new stack coming where like all these different semantic layer companies are part of this new stack. Um, and you know, uh, I, I, I think that as people build with the semantic layer, it's, uh, you know, I think that's something that's great about LLMs is that they play really well. And you know, you can, uh, you can build a, kind of a LLM connector to a semantic layer fairly easily. But the hard part is uh, how do you actually maintain the semantic layer itself? And that's, uh, I think, the hard question. Um, that's kind of like what, you know, what we've been doing uh, ever since the beginning. Um, and I think that's going to be kind of like our focus is on that hard problem. I love this. This is, again, we call it the sixth data platform. Uh, Snowflake created the modern data platform, but, and there's, you, we totally agree there's another one coming. And if we fast forward, there's not only the explosion of open table formats and bringing com any compute engine to any data, there's more. There's, I want transactions, I want agentic uh, uh, AI, I want people, places, I want Uber for my enterprise. I want a digital representation of my business uh, where things that databases understand, like strings, can actually be translated into things. Yeah. And, and that's where, in part, you, you come in, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, you're going you're gonna to continue to need innovation, not just in, um, you know, the, the data ecosystem, but you are going to need to see innovation in AI itself in order to really be able to distribute all the value of the data to the business users at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. And that, that's, that's the role that we play, is providing the most state-of-the-art AI to this whole ecosystem. Well, I'm interested in your perspective as a generative AI founder, what you see as the, the, the risks and rewards for companies that are using this in their daily tasks, for the employees who are, who are, who are using Seek. And we have on one hand Warren Buffett saying that AI scares the hell out of him, and, and then we have, you know, we're here <laughs> obviously at a tech conference where you feel the energy and excitement, and there's a lot of evangelists around here. What, what, are, what are a more measured approach? How do you see things? Like how do I see the risks and rewards of AI? Yeah, just in terms <laughs> of your vision for the future of work. I mean, the thing that I've always been excited about is structured data. Um, it's, uh, you know, I think we've seen like so much innovation this summit when it comes to just the intersection of AI and structured data, but this is just the tip of the iceberg, so to speak. <laughs> um, <laughs> Very punny. Yeah, I mean, it, there's so, so much, like it, it's, it's such early innings in terms of what we're going to be able to do with structured data. Um, and so I'm just really excited about that. Um, I think like you know, a year from now, we're, we're going to see a lot of advancements there. Well, what about the, 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 the blending of structured and so that's why we yeah. use Uber as the example. You're a, a customer, you call, a, a, you got drivers, riders, ETAs, uh, uh, geolocation, you've got pricing, all these different data elements that yeah. Uber had to write a semantic layer to make them all coherent and it is that digital representation of the physical world and, and the digital world coming together. That's really exciting um, and kind of game changing when you think of Industry 4.0, uh, other new applications. Where do you fit in that? You're right in the heart of, of, of all of that. You're an enabler to that. There's, there's, there's knowledge graphs, graph database as well, but, but your, your vision is a, a really important piece of that to be able to harmonize that data and maintain it, as you said, because yeah. things change, right? Are we getting this? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. You're, you're going to need, I think, more AI in addition to LLMs, uh, you know, other types of AI to be able to play a role to orchestrate um, you know, this emerging uh, stack that's, I think, going to really take shape over the next year. Do you have an, a, a point of view on agentic AI? Yeah. Oh, I mean, how do you how do you think how do you have do you, how do you define that and how do you think about its evolution? Yeah, I mean, you could consider Seek an agent in some ways, in that it's you know it's not just generating uh, output from an LLM, but it's also taking sequential actions and not only that, but learning from you know these this series of sequential steps. 
um, that, that's how I would define an agent. It's not just something that can you know, tell you something, it's something that can also take actions. Um, well, querying data is taking an action. And so agents are a very important part of you know, querying both structured and unstructured data. And knowing, knowing which data to query. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's the information retrieval uh, piece of and, it. And, and of course, having the plumbing, being able to, to query different data types, unstructured, structured, different storage formats, Wow. You've wow. given Dave a lot to you think about, Sarah. you got a lot of work Sarah. to do here. <laughs> <laughs> Sarah, thank you so much for coming on theCUBE. A really fascinating conversation. Yeah, thank you guys so much. Appreciate Thanks, it. Sarah. I'm Rebecca Knight for Dave Vellante. Stay tuned for more of theCUBE's live coverage of the Snowflake Data Cloud Summit. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in enterprise tech news and analysis.